Man, it's good to see a packed house in Render today. So fun to see you guys. I, lo I love you, okay? I love you all. It's going to be a fun Render today. Man, we have the honor and the privilege of hearing an amazing speaker, an amazing person, first and foremost, speak today, preach the word today. And his name is Elijah Zilke. Can we just give it up for Elijah Zilke? It's going to be a really, really great day, really great day. Hey, quick announcement before we start. There is a prayer meeting in Anderson Chapel right after service. And so if you want to head over there, we're going to be praying for our nation, praying for our city. Um, it's going to be a great time. And so it's led by Joshua Edmond and Doug Graham. So if you want to pop over to Anderson after this service, it's going to be a good time. And it's going to be a, a really important time of prayer. So we're going to play a bumper video. I want everyone on their feet. And welcome, Eli Zoki. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Wow. It is so good to see you all. This is amazing. <laughs> Guys, my name is Elijah Zilke, just like Ryan said. And I hope you all had an amazing spring break. I did. I got to spend time with family. It was great. But just before we get started, I want everyone to say hi, say what's up to your neighbor, say what is going on. And now, guys, tell them, ask them, would you go out with me? Just like that, I literally set up like 50 first dates. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Call me the love guru or something. <laughs> Speaking of 50 first dates, um, that movie, uh, when Rob Schneider was getting hit, hit by that bat, that was pretty awesome. Like, I could not stop laughing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Who here has a messy roommate? I know I do. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am, I'm the messy roommate by far. I have to be honest. I have to be honest. <laughs> when Reggie Dabbs was here, I asked him one question. I'm like, what would some advice be that you would give to a new speaker? And he's like, make it personal. So I'm going to be personal with you today. Just to let you know right away, I don't claim to know everything. I don't claim to be perfect. I don't have my life figured out. But just to, just to let you guys know how much I don't have my life figured out, um, last year, I totally forgot to bring a pillow back to school. So for the entire year, I slept without a pillow. And now I can't sleep with a pillow. Literally, I have one now, but right before I go to bed, I move it to the side because it just feels weird when I'm leaning my head. I can't do it. Um, this year, I forgot to bring my towels. So I used a shirt for over two weeks before I ended up getting the towel. Let me know. That just let you know, guys, that does not work. Don't do it. Buy a towel right away. Don't be stubborn like me. Guys, you probably are wondering who in the world let this guy up here. He doesn't use a towel. What is going on? I don't know. Blame Ryan. It's his fault. <laughs> but anyway, the first time I hung out with Ryan, we got into a car accident. Literally. We were just trying to get inside me cookies. Come on. <laughs> but Ryan, I love him so much. He has amazing leadership abilities. He is awesome. I can't wait to see how God uses him, and I can't wait... And it's awesome to see how God is using them now. <sighs> Let's pray. Dear God, I pray you will use this sermon even after that intro, God. I pray that we will come to know you and experience you and draw closer to you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. The first attribute of God is God is a provider. I titled this message, Experiencing God. And... The first story I'm going to be talking to you about is about Abraham. If you guys could turn to Genesis 22, verse 1. Um, a little backstory on Abraham. He could not have children for the longest time. But God promised him that he would have descendants that would become a great nation. But so finally, at the age of 90, his wife, Sarah, gave birth to a son named Isaac. And this is where it takes us to verse 1, chapter 22 in Genesis. Now, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, 
and go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him here as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time sacrificing Chick-fil-A, let alone some, a son. That's crazy. But God, I mean, but Abraham trusted God. He had faith in him, and he decided to obey him anyway. So he decided to take his son and go up to the mountain. And this is where it brings us to verse 7. Isaac, Isaac is like, the fire and wood are here, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Guys, literally, if I was in Isaac's position, I would be squealing like a pig. I'd be like, like, untie me. What is going on? Please. But then Abraham reached out. And he took out his knife, and he was ready to slay his son. But right before he was going to do that, God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, Abraham. And then Abraham replied, here I am. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Isaac was literally about to be sacrificed by his dad. Talk about daddy issues, my goodness. Man. He said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram, and he sacrificed the ram as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called this place, the Lord will provide. And to this day on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. You see, this is the first time in scripture we see the name Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Abraham came to an intimate knowledge of God that day through the experience of God as a provider. This is, too, how we grow to know God. As we experience God firsthand, we come to know him in a new and increasingly deeper dimension. So, guys, we can learn that God provides as we read the stories about Abraham, but we really know God as a provider once we experience him providing something specifically for us. So, guys, for the longest time, I didn't have car insurance. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know. It's bad. It's, it's a lot. It's, you need to have car insurance. But I didn't. I'm a broke college student. I don't have money for that. But I felt God telling me, you know, it's not good to take shortcuts. You don't get anywhere. God will provide no matter what. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get car insurance. I'm going to pay for this insurance even though I don't have a lot of money. And I paid for the first payment, not knowing how I was going to pay for the second. But I trusted God through obedience. And the day before, right when my car insurance payment was up, I got a check in the mail. And I'm like, won't God do it? God is amazing. <laughs> That's why it's so important to have an open mind, looking to see for ways God is working in our life. This brings us to my second attribute of God. God has many attributes, but I'm focusing on three. The second attribute is I am, the great I am, Yahweh. A little backstory, we're going to move on to Moses. Now Moses was a prince in Egypt, but he was an Israelite. So one time he saw an Egyptian soldier beating up an Israelite slave. So he took the soldier and killed him. And because of this, Pharaoh did not like that. <laughs> He's like, I want Moses dead. So Moses had to flee for his life to a place called Midian. And this brings us to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro for his father, the priest of Midian. So he was a shepherd. He was in the wilderness. And then one day, he was just tending the flock, and then he saw this strange sight. The strange sight was this burning bush that was not burning up crazy. Like it's burning, but it's not burning. I, I'm confused. But yeah, so he's like, I will go over and see the strange sight. Why does this bush doesn't burn up? Um, I would do two different things if I saw a bush on fire that wasn't burning up. Either I would run away as fast as I can because things are crazy. Or some of you know I make YouTube videos. I probably would have got my vlog camera. It's like, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the vlog. We are going to be doing a 24-hour challenge with this burning bush. <laughs> Man. 
When the Lord saw that he'd gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, he said. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying. And now I am sending you. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring the people out of the land of Egypt. (sighs) Moses is like, I don't know if you know, but... I killed someone there. They don't want me there. I'm scared. I don't want to go there. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to speak. I didn't take homiletics or speech class. <laughs> Come on. But God said, I will be with you. I will give you a sign. I will be a sign to you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me. And they asked me, what is his name? Then what shall I call him? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. By this, God was declaring, I am the eternal one. I will be what I will be. In essence, in declaration, it held a promise. Whenever you need me in your life, I will be with you. I'm everything you will need. During the next 40 years, Moses experienced God as Yahweh, the great I am. God was everything Moses and Israel needed him to be. Acknowledging God's name amounts to recognizing who God is calling, who God is. Calling on his name indicates you are seeking his presence to praise his name, to exalt him. God's name is majestic and worthy to be praised. That is so good. But even after all that, even after God promised him that he would be with him, he would be everything he needed him to be, Moses still pleaded, Oh, Lord, I'm not good with words. I've never been, and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. I get tongue-tied, and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak here or do not see? Or, and then now he's like, go. I will be with you. I will speak for you. I will instruct you what to say. But Moses still pleaded, Lord, please send anyone else. Then the Lord became angry. He's like, all right, fine. If you don't want to go or speak, I'm going to have someone else do it for you. I'm going to have Aaron, your brother. He's good at speaking. You're going to miss out on this opportunity. Guys, don't miss out on the opportunity to be used by God and to experience God. This is pretty much the first time I've ever preached in front of people. I get so nervous when I'm on stage. I start to shake. I start, my heart starts to beat super fast. But I believe God has called me to preach and tell other people about Jesus. So I'm not going to let that stop me from preaching. You see, I had no idea, or I had no idea when I would be able to get a chance to preach. But I felt God wanted me to preach. So I knew I had to get better. I had to rehearse. I had to write a sermon. I had to prepare. So I ended up writing a sermon. And... When Ryan asked me, hey, do you have a sermon prepared? And I'm like, yeah, I do. That's awesome. See, when you're obedient, God will reward you. Watch for ways God may bring you to a deeper knowledge of him through the experience of your own life. Then take time to worship God so that you can uh, come to know him more. Guys, if we could have the worship team come up, that would be awesome. Um, My third attribute is God as a rescuer. So sometime later, after Moses was obedient, other than speaking, um, he uh, finally, after the ten plagues of Egypt, Pharaoh finally let the uh, Israelites go. But Pharaoh was like, wait a minute. 
I don't have anyone to do the work for me. What is going on? This is awful. So he is like, I'm going to take 600 chariots and chase after the Israelites. <sighs> when the Israelites saw when the Israelites saw Pharaoh coming, well, you know how they were. Dramatic. Literally, they were like, we're going to die. Why in the world did you bring us here? Weren't there enough graves in Egypt? Guys, listen to what Moses told the Israelites. This is so good. Don't be afraid. Stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Lord himself will fight for you. Stay calm. You see, God wants his glory to be known. He wants his glory to be known all over the world. Sometimes he's going to allow things to happen so that you can be in awe of his great glory. You see, when the people saw the Israelites, when the people of Israel saw the mighty power that God unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him and they put their faith in the Lord and the servant Moses. God doesn't promise life is going to be easy. Sometimes he allows things to happen so we can experience him in a new way. Like the Israelites, experience God as a rescuer. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed glorious. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength. In my song, he has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. Guys, listen to this part. Listen to this part. Many people long for God to do a significant work in their life, but however, they try to bypass the love relationship with him. The love relationship is why God created you. That is far more important than what you do for him. Anticipate the first thing God will do in your life is to draw you closer to him. When your relationship with God is as it should be, he will begin giving you assignments as his initiative. When it seems that God is not doing any, anything in your life, draw closer to him. Seek him until he gives you an assignment. When your relationship with God is as it ought to be, you will always be in fellowship with him, with the Father and you will enjoy being in his presence, having a close fellowship with God. God wants us to align our lives with him, and we will accomplish his divine purpose in and through us. God is not our servant. He's not our servant. He's not a servant to bless our plans and desires. He wants to adjust our lives to what he is doing. If we will not submit to God, then we will just chase our own desires. And all that will just turn away. Be sure of this. We will miss God's activity if we're not experiencing, if we will not experience what God wants to do through us and so that we can bless others. As Christians, it's not only important what we do, but how we do it. Guys, I'm not saying this to brag or to say that I'm more of a holy person or a person that's a better Christian. No. But ever since I started seeking God every day, seeking Him, to seek to have a relationship with Him. So so I can experience him each and every day. I've seen so much growth. That's what I want you guys to have, so much growth, so much, so much to be in a relationship with God, a relationship, an intimate relationship with God, and that will change. Make sure to take time each day to grow in your relationship with God. Um, guys, I have just one last story. It's not, it's not from the Bible but it's about a brother and a sister. The brother and sister were both in high school at this time. They're both in high school at this time, and one day when they were in high school, they got a phone call. The phone call said, come home right away. Not knowing what was going on, the brother and sister went home only to find out that their dad was diagnosed with leukemia. And he had to go to the hospital right away before he uh, to go on, to undergo chemotherapy. See, the hospital was over two hours away. Um, the hospital was over two hours away, so they couldn't see their dad. 
But finally, after a month, they were able to see their dad. And when they got there, they hardly could recognize him because it looked like he aged over 20, 20 years. He lost so much weight. He lost all of his hair. He could not recognize him. But they still loved him, and they wanted him to get better. You see, before they found out that their dad had leukemia, they signed up to go on a mission trip to tell other people about Jesus in the Himalayas. So they decided to go, even though their dad was sick, they decided to tell other people about Jesus. And they were in India, and they're telling people about Jesus. Even the boy got to share his testimony on how God was with him during this time of when his dad was going through leukemia and cancer. Um, yeah, so it was going great. At the end of the mission trip, the leaders brought the brother and sister to the, uh, to the side and said, hey, we have some news. Your mom is called and said that your father has passed away. Um, that day, the two siblings chose two different paths. Um, the sister decided to fill that void that she lost with her father with a relationship with a boy that wasn't God-honoring. That relationship ended up to be very, very abusive and just awful. Now the brother chose a different path. He decided to experience God as a heavenly father and to seek to grow in his relationship with him. You see, the difference was the boy decided to, to have an intimate relationship with God, to fill the void in his life. Guys, that boy was me. Just like all of you, we've experienced a loss some type of loss. You see, if you have a love relationship with God, you will experience him actively working in and through your life. For instance, you could not truly know God as the comforter in sorrow unless you experience compassion during a time of grief or sadness. Some of you need to experience God today. Some of you haven't surrendered completely to God. We've all experienced some loss. Guys, when your relationship with God is as it ought to be, you will always be in fellowship with the Father. You will always be in fellowship with the Father. If you have a loss, a loved one, you'll be in fellowship with the Father. That's so amazing. You see, you can experience God in so many different ways as a father as a comforter in sorrow, as a wonderful counselor, as a friend, as our peace, as our refuge and strength, as my salvation, as the good shepherd, my guider, God who saves me, God who is faithful and true, my hope, my king, Lord of lords, and my support, prince of peace and redeemer. Guys, if there's just one thing that I want you to take away from this message is, I want you to draw closer to God. And through that, if by experiencing him, you can see the awe and the glory and the mighty power God is. And I want you all to have a hunger and be on fire for God and to see that the Holy Spirit will move throughout us all. I just pray that, guys. I want everyone to stand up. Everyone stand up. I just want you all to experience God. I want you all to pray this prayer. Dear God. I pray that we will experience you each and every day, God. I pray that we will seek to know you, seek to know you and to have a love relationship with you, God. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us and be with us and give us hope and peace, God. Thank you so much for your presence, God. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. In Jesus' name, amen.